right, guys, we're getting suited up here. Finally, finally the water is clear. As you guys can see, we can see the bottom here. Which we haven't been able to do in three days. Yeah, this is the weather we've been waiting for. It is an outgoing tide right now, so we got to get in here quick and uh, try and fill the box up. Hey guys, welcome back. This is the third day of May. We usually go for the first week of May down to Key West every year. And uh, our first two days, we had really bad weather. And this is the third day, and as you can see, the water is beautifully crystal clear. On this particular day, it was an uh, outgoing tide. And what this means down in Key West is that most of the murky water and stuff that gets sucked back up into the Gulf is working its way back out towards the uh, Atlantic side. And that means, you know, we got a very short window here to, uh, to be diving because before the water gets dirty again. As you can see here, I'm diving down on this mutton. It's kind of staying away from me, but I'm tracking him. Squeezed off a shot and uh, luckily got a stone shot here. On this dive here, you could see towards the beginning of the video, we were uh, throwing in some of these chum balls and that gets these muttons real nice and uh, friendly with you. Nice and chummed up. You can see right there on the bottom, big stud mutton just cruising along looking for some delicious chum. I'm closing the gap here. And he gets around this fern, turns back to me, and I get a real nice uh, nerve shot on him. And nerve shot means it kind of just knocks him unconscious, and you got to be sure to bring these fish, otherwise they're going to go nuts like he does here in a second. As you can see, that shot's pretty far back. Oh, yeah. So, I had just turned the camera on, and this mutton was about halfway up in the water column. I started chasing after him a little bit. He dropped down to the bottom, and I take a little bit of a long shot here, but fortunately I'm able to sneak that shaft in and get a, a stone shot on this fish. Alright guys, in this clip my dad's going down on a nice big brain coral head. We have in about 20-25 feet of water. You can see all the life around it. Um, really a good indicator that there's going to be some larger predatory fish in the area. You see he's going to prep his gun as he rolls this corner here. Make sure he's ready for whatever fish might happen to be sitting there. He's got his flashlight out looking over to the left. You can see something stirred up the bottom and on the right there there's a small grouper and just behind them a real nice grouper squeezes off a shot and it's lucky enough to get a stone shot on that fish getting a stone shot on a fish like that when they're up in a rock really makes the extraction process easy so he's able to pull it right out and bring the fish up he was just laying there waiting for me to shoot him in the box. Water clarity is awesome, and uh, we're laying them out uh, left and right. Already got a nice uh, little black in the boat. Got a couple of big muttons, a couple of mangroves, some red grouper. You know, it's turning out to be a pretty damn good day, and it's only 10:30. On this dive here, you can see that's my dad going down there, and he sees this little grouper sitting in the sand. And as he gets closer, he realizes it's not moving, and it's laying on its side. And he picks it up, and there's a hole in the top of its head perfect stone shot on a definitely legal fish but what happened here was that we're assuming that someone had shot this fish and measured it and saw it was legal but figured they might get a bigger one so they just threw it back for no other reason than absolute greed yeah and we, we measured this fish and it was clearly over 24 inches and it's really just depressing that people would kill that fish but then throw it back in hopes of a bigger fish all right guys so i was swimming down this um little reef line here and i saw all these nice big grunts stacked up on the edge of this ledge here and it looked like there was a nice little cave in there and i get down and sure enough real dark cave back in there so i get my light off my belt i'm looking around looking around trying to see where there'd be a nice grouper sitting and you can see there's a big lionfish there, but just past that lionfish, I can see there's a really nice black sitting in there. 
and I turn my light off and then I flick it back on so it doesn't spook him and then you can just see him there in that back left corner his lips are hanging out there and I get my gun up in there get a nice shot aimed at him and pull the trigger and it sounded like I stoned him at first but then he turned around and took a whole bunch of real line into the cave there and I mean my my drag was locked down but he was pulling it out of my hand and he pulled me up against the rocks I mean at that point I knew it was a really good fish so this next clip here is my perspective of this situation I'm a little bit further up on the ledge I'm checking out another similar little hole I'm at the end of my dive here I've come up and I'm taking a look around and you can see a big dust cloud as soon as I see it, I know it's from a fish, so I start looking around, wondering what happened to cause that dust cloud. And I, I come up, and I'm looking to see who's there and what caused all this, and my brother's yelling that he shot a nice fish, and I can think it's completely unrelated to this dust cloud. So I swim huh? over to take a look and see what's going on over here. So once I got down to the part where Justin said he shot the fish, I uh, peek underneath this ledge here. You can see his shooting line here runs all the way back. I'm trying to take a look, see where it was heading. And it looks like it went down the ledge. So I uh, give the line a little bit of a pull just to see how tight or loose it is. Pop up and you can see the line continues here on the left. And what do you know, it leads right back to that cloud of dust I saw earlier, 30 or 40 feet down the ledge. So I go ahead and pop in where this dust cloud's coming from. I give the line a slight tug just to see if he's way back there or if he's close and I can feel that he's right there. So I come up, I was at the end of my dive and I let him know what's going on. He ran way up there. Right there. Yeah, give me the light. Uh, pull him out, keep your hands on it, shoot him with your gun. All right, so my dad went down um, after we let that uh, current come in and clear out the merc, it's always a good idea to let the merc be cleared out first before you try to attempt to extract um, a fish. Goes down there, shoots him, and you can see he pulls him out, and the fish is still quite lively and starts to swim around my dad. And when there's line like that, it's never a good deal. And he's kind of at the end of his dive here, so you can see he tries to cut it there. Didn't have tension on the line. I go down and cut it. And uh, now the fish is free, and I grab him and pull him up, and Derek's working safety up there on the surface, and another gorgeous fish in the boat. down I flicked the light on in this dark cave and he's just sitting right there here let's get him in the boat and then uh, I flicked the light on and he was sitting right there so I put my gun right to his head and pulled the trigger I had my reel locked down and he took off into the cave and brought a whole bunch of reel line in there here okay. Hell yeah, baby! That's a good one there, buddy. He was laying like that behind a rock and I took the gun. Ah. Wow. Nice one. Yeah, buddy. Good job. I haven't seen him like that in a long time. So after we shot that fish, we uh, took a little time to get reorganized and we popped out to about 60 foot of water and the water clarity had just severely dropped, a kind of window of opportunity had left. I took a dive and had a real lucky opportunity getting that mutton there, um, but as you'll see here when I get to the surface, it is just real dirty. You can't even see shapes from 60 okay, feet of water, out. so we knew our time was limited.
So we ran down the reef line a little bit and found a little bit cleaner water. This is about 30 feet of water. And there's a good sized grouper here. He sees me and kind of shoots off. So I come down and I get a headshot. Um, fortunately, he wasn't able to stone this fish. It was kind of a quick decision there to pull the trigger. Um, pull him out. Secure the fish, and then I get my uh, my line still caught on this rock. I'm still kind of early in the dive, so I go back down to uh, to free it. And I'm coming up, taking a look at the fish, and out of the blue here in the right, Mr. Shark comes up pretty quick. When I see that fish coming straight at me, kind of had his pecs down. I go ahead and drop the fish. In my mind, I'd rather the shark go after the fish than come after me. So I dropped the fish. Um, the fish, the, when I did that, it kind of spooked the shark away. So I go ahead and pull the grouper to me so I can kind of get him up and out of the water. I call the boat over. And this might be the fastest I've ever jumped in the boat. In most situations with sharks, if they're pretty calm, you know, you don't have to throw your fish away. Um, actually, I would encourage you to get that fish close to you if the shark is calm as to not encourage the wrong behavior. But with a shark that was, you know, clearly had all of its attention fo focused on that fish, he had his pecs down and he <laughs> zipped in really quick. Um, the best thing, in my opinion, would be to get that attention away from your body and just try and get uh, to the boat as quick as possible. This next dive here, I'm diving a nice little ledge and peeking up to this little uh, ledge here and this dog snapper swims out of the ledge and right up to me you can see I, when, when I take that shot I spook a small black grouper and a goliath grouper that were in the same ledge um, and again the water's still a little murky here after just seeing that shark I uh, just bring them up and decide that's enough for this spot and time to move So as you can see here, it has really gotten pretty murky. We are about done with our diving for the day, but I take one last dive, take a look around. You can see here, just kind of scanning. You can't see too well from the surface because of the murk. Um, checking out this little ledge, just seeing what's going on, hoping somebody's gonna swim in. Just checking the ledges. This is what most of your dives look like. And I'd say nine times out of 10, you don't see something you can shoot. That footage doesn't make it to the YouTube. But uh, <laughs> opportunities when you do get a fish do. So you can see here, I'm about done with my dive, but spot a nice mutton off in the distance. And instead of swimming directly at him, I try to swim where he's going. He kind of swims up to this ledge and really lets me close that distance and I get a good headshot, not quite a stone shot and you can see here with that murk this fish starts thrashing around and fighting me I got the reel going another non-ideal situation but luckily in this situation I had my dad and brother nearby and I just uh, slowly pull up this nice fish Oh yeah. That's a beast. <laughs> That's a box. <laughs> 